Hey guys, Aniso here, and today we want to talk about one of the strongest carry heroes this patch, which is Draw Ranger. Draw Ranger is a positional based right click carry. Positioning is really important with Draw Ranger because she's really squishy, and also her ultimate deactivates when people get near her. But also, she can buff up her teammates with the strong aura and deal a lot of damage if positioned correctly. One of the most important things when considering to pick Dro is that you need other heroes that frontline for you. Dro is not a frontline hero, she's really squishy and she gets burst down really quickly. So you want other heroes that can stay in front of you, especially in lane your POS 5 support. It is really important that you only pick Dro Ranger when you have a melee POS 5 hero. Some examples could be Undying, Ogre Magi, Dream Protector, Elder Titan, Clockwork, Spirit Breaker and Tusk. All of those heroes are pretty beefy, they can stay in front of you and they can run at people to soak the damage while you attack the enemy. On level 1 we usually want to take Frost Arrows, just because it's the strongest spell for laning and also to secure creeps. Right clicking people with frost arrows will not draw aggro from the creeps, so we definitely always want to take this level 1. Level 2, you almost always go for multi shot, just so you have more harass potential onto the enemies. Level 3, we take the second point in frost arrows. In most games, you just want to max out multi shot right away and take your ultimate at level 6. In some games you need to take earlier point in silence at around level 4 or 5 if the enemies have heroes that just constantly run at you, such as Spirit Breaker and Clockwork for example. But if you can, then skip it until level 8. You maybe want to take a third point in your Frost Arrow if you feel like you need a little bit more slow, but usually you will skip this until level 9. For your talents you usually want to take all the talents that allow you to deal more damage, which is Frost Arrow damage at 10, Multishot cooldown at 15 and then Multishot damage at 20. At 25 you have the choice between Multishot waves and Markmanship chance. Both of those talents are really good. I'd default to Multishot waves, but if you're playing against targets that have either really high armor or a lot of evasion, you probably want to take the Markmanship chance. Feel free to decide in your game. So in most games we want to start off with one set of tangos, then double slippers of agility, double ivan branch and a quelling blade. This will ensure that we get a lot of last hits and also make us really good at trading early on with the enemies. When the enemies have a lot of burst potential level 1, you might want to consider swapping out one of the slippers for a healing salve, but usually it is enough if you send one salve with the courier or ask your support to buy yourself. The first major item that we want to buy is power treads. However, if you are playing against a hard lane, you might want to consider buying one or two wraith bands before. After the power treads, you usually want to build a magic wand and then a dragon lance. Dragon lance is the first major item that will speed up our farm, allows us to take more towers and also participate into early fights if we want to. If you really feel like you can only farm the jungle for the next 5 minutes, then you probably want to skip the magic wand and go into the dragon lance right away. After finishing the Dragonlands, you need to do your first big item choice. It is either Manta Style, Hurricane Pike, Shadow Blade or BKB right away. Manta is probably the item you want to go for in most games if you are allowed to. It will provide decent all stats for you, more agility, more attack speed, just more HP. Just a pretty solid item in general. Also it will give you the ability to dispel any debuffs by just using the Manta style and you can push out waves really safe with the illusions. If you are playing against heroes with gap closing abilities such as Phantom Assassin or Ricky Maru with their blink abilities, you really want to consider getting a Hurricane Pike. Hurricane Pike will allow you to force yourself away from those heroes. But if possible you'd want to try to avoid building this item as a first major core item just because the additional stats you gain from the forced of component itself is not that great for Draw Ranger. Another great item is the Shadow Blade. With Shadow Blade, you're a big threat on the map. If enemy squishy targets, especially the supports, run around alone, you can usually solo kill them with Shadow Blade. In sticky situations, you can also use the invisibility from the Shadow Blade as an escape tool. 
Then we have BKB. You almost always want to build BKB every single game. But in most games you try to get one of the core items mentioned before and build the BKB afterwards. But there might be some games where you want to get BKB right after the Dragonlance if you're playing against a lot of magic damage or a lot of CC abilities onto the enemy team. For the late game we almost always want to build a Butterfly or a Satanic. Both of those items are really great for Drow. Both of them will provide you the ability to siege the enemy high ground and also take Roche really easy. Butterfly will give you a lot of agility which gives more damage with your ultimate for all of your teammates and Satanic just has great lifesteal components. If you were building a Shadow Blade before you can also consider upgrading the Shadow Blade to a Silver Edge. It is just a pretty good item in general that will give you the ability to crit and also disable enemy passives. We also got some situational items being the swift blink. Usually you want to aim for a swift blink if you feel like there is one really important target that you need to snipe out in a fight such as a tinker for example. If you feel like the only thing you are lacking is damage then you can also build a Daedalus instead of a silver edge. If you're playing against a lot of illusion heroes you can consider getting an Aghanims and if you're playing against a lot of heroes with high regeneration you can also consider getting a shard. But you usually try to avoid buying those items unless you're a 6 slotted already. One of the most important things you need to know about draw is that your frost arrows will not draw aggro from the creeps if you cast them manually onto the enemies. If you put them on autocast and you right click them that's the wrong way, don't do it. You want to make use out of this as much as you can and you want to play really aggressive level 1 and 2. Just right click the enemies every time that you are not about to make a last hit. Always try to harass them and also play with your support together. If your support is trading with the enemy support then try to always be in range so you can help to secure kills if the enemy is overextending. Drow is really great at getting kills early on. The other choice you got is to just right click the enemy offlaner all the time while the support is busy trading with your melee hero. But keep in mind that the most important thing is to get last hits, not kills. If your lane is pushing towards the enemies, one of the best things you can do is to right click an enemy hero to draw the creep aggro and then run back so the creeps will attack your range creep. You should try to make this consistently nearly every single time that the wave is pushing. As you can see here in the video, this will ensure that the wave is close to your tower and also put the enemy offlaner out of position a lot of the time if they try to go for the last hit and open kill opportunities. The closer the wave is to your tower, the more easier the lane is for draw. Once you hit level 6, you want to make your first major decision. With level 6 you get your ultimate which allows you to farm neutral creeps way more easy just because of the fact that you ignore armor and deal bonus damage. If you have a great lane, if you won the lane already and you're not scared of dying in the lane then try to still play the lane and farm the jungle camps around the lane and then go back to the lane to farm it again. Just circle between the lane and the camps. But if you feel like you're having a hard time you should definitely leave the lane and just go into the jungle. Try to jungle your way towards the mid lane and farm all the camps around there. Only go back to your safe lane if you feel really safe that you are not dying. The most important thing on Draw Ranger is to consistently keep farming without dying. Draw Ranger is a really great ancient farming hero. So at some point you definitely want to try to head towards your triangle and farm the ancients. When there's no hero in the mid lane, quickly go there, multi-shot out the wave and then go back to the triangle to farm the ancients. Just quickly pushing out the wave with multi-shot and then going back to the ancients is usually way safer than farming the mid wave with auto attacks just because enemies can gank you while you're doing that. Once you have finished your Dragonlands, you really want to try to look for fights that you can join without dying. Most of the time it will be either in the middle lane or the top lane. Don't TP to the safe lane, that's a big mistake. But if there is a fight going on onto the top lane or the mid lane, try to be there and at least cast your multi shot. Usually this will result in you getting one or two kills and in the best scenario also result in you getting an early tower. 
Your goal as Draw Ranger is to almost join every team fight that looks winnable. Your hero is really great at participating in the team fights without overcommitting. In the worst scenario, you can just use multi shot from far away to slow enemies and to damage them and then just run away. In the best case scenario, you win the team fight and you get a tower. But make sure to always stay in the back. Let your teammates initiate the fight and then follow up a few seconds afterwards. Always kite in and out of the fight. Your ultimate will also deactivate if enemies will come close to you, so make sure you're staying far away. Very important. When ganking enemy heroes, make sure that you are not the one that is starting the gank. You want to be the one that is following up after your teammates have already initiated onto the enemy. Around the 15 minute timing, after you've reached level 12, this is the time where you want to try to look for Roche. Don't force Roche, but if you can manage to either win a fight or to force a lot of heroes onto the other part of the map, taking Roche can be a great idea. Aegis will allow Dro to play way more aggressive without the risk of her dying. This will usually ensure that you win the next team fight and also allow you to farm way more aggressive onto the map. Always keep an eye out on the positioning of your heroes on your team and also the enemy's positioning onto the map. Try to always play around wards if possible, because vision is key. Without vision you can't have good positioning and without good positioning you will almost always die as draw. The way you take fights as draw is that you usually multi-shot from max range and then you get one or two hits onto the enemies and then if they run close to you, you run back and you kite them. Kiting with draw is really important, don't just stand still when enemies are running at you. Try to push them away with gust, try to slow them with your frost arrows and then kite back. If enemies get close to you, your aura will not work and you won't provide any bonus damage for you and your teammates. Very important. At some point you want to siege the enemy high ground. Roranger is really good at sieging because of her high attack range combined with the dragon lance. But it is very important that you don't just run onto the enemy high ground. Make sure to either get the second Roche so you get another Aegis and then siege the tower of Aegis or to get important kills onto key targets in the enemy team such as their carry or mid hero. You can also use your Manter style and send the illusions onto the high ground just so you get vision to siege the tower if it's night time. Make sure not to overextend. Try to stay low ground and then only hit from there. Make sure to always let your teammates initiate the fights, even in the late game when you feel really strong. Don't make the mistake of throwing the game just by thinking that you're unkillable and then just getting picked off solo. Always play with your team. Draw Ranger is only as strong as her team. She's not a solo hero, keep that in mind for the whole game. You are not a solo hero, but a team hero. So I really hope you guys liked the video and if you have any feedback or questions feel free to comment down below. Since my YouTube channel is still pretty new and small, I would definitely appreciate every support that I can get from you guys. So if you have the time and you've learned something, then please drop a like and also consider subscribing to the channel if you want to get more information about future guides that I will release. I wish every one of you guys an awesome day, see you.